has really turned into one of the classic courses in the United States. It's got uh, a little bit of everything. Nice start circuits, obviously a big hill in the middle of the large circuits we do, and uh, some finished circuits, which are great for downtown and great for the fans. It's uh, We've got flats, got climbing, got descending, and really we've seen the last few years only about 30% of the starters finish the race. It's a very difficult event. USA Cycling has been a great event for the city of Greenville. It's exciting to have people from all over the country and all over the world to come to our city and discover the beauty that is downtown Greenville. Uh, they find a cycling event like none other because it enters into our beautiful downtown and then takes off into the countryside up Paris Mountain into that beautiful terrain there. So it gives you both a rural and an urban experience all wrapped in one. Uh, and then again, back in downtown Greenville, it's a festival atmosphere because everyone around here is accustomed to coming downtown for festivals and special events. And you can just feel that, that, that sense of, uh, of specialness to the, to the whole event for all the folks who are there. Uh, it's an unusual event in that uh, it's, it's not like normal sports events where you just sit in a stadium. Uh, in this case, of course, you can be in your own backyard, your own front yard, or you can come to, the, to, to beautiful downtown Greenville on the sidewalks and enjoy the festival atmosphere in downtown Greenville. So the race on a sort of a difficulty scale, it is a very difficult race. Although Paris Mountain Climb is not that long compared to the big climbs in Europe, they do do it four times. Um, and sometimes it's not, it's not the difficulty of the climb, but sometimes it's what's leading up to the climb or after the climb. Um, not only do we have Paris Mountain, but you have the hills on North Main and you go through the park and there's a lot of turns. And so it's a, it's a very difficult race. And you know, the mountain is, is uh, it, it's hard enough, it's steep enough to where you can have a selection. Um, if you look at the last lap of the mountain every year, uh, there's not that many guys that make it to the top together. And you generally don't see more than six or seven guys together crossing the line at the end. And that's a big indication of how difficult that, that particular day was. I think uh, the road race circuit is, is fantastic. Um, you know, I've done it twice before. And both times saw a really good separation and selection in the race and, and saw the strong guys come to the come to the front and, and really you know battle it down to the last minute. Welcome to the 2010 USA Cycling Professional Road Championship, the 25th edition, the fifth time in Greenville. And here's a good reason why. We took a look at HTC Columbia rider Craig Lewis as he has a chance to meet friends and family before the sign-in. And of course, the king, defending champion George Hincapie. Ryan Thibodeau from New Orleans had the honor of playing our national anthem as our Field and attendance obviously ready to get down to work. That's a game face if I've ever seen one. That's a war face actually that we're looking at on Keel Ryan in there. The young Jelly Belly rider who'll be looking to make the podium here today as we send the group out for 115 miles of racing. How we get to the finish line, however, has three small circuits in town here. It's great to have the amazing turnout. 80,000 anticipated it went well over that at the start as we watch the 80 riders that make up our professional field head out on the first small circuit here. There's three circuits, so the crowd gets a great look at the field. And we'll see if there's any animation for them as well as last year it was Dave Zabriskie attacking on lap one and spending quite a bit of time out in the wind. We'll see if it's going to play out a little bit differently uh, as we make our way to the end game, but a great look from our helicopter of of the field here as they ease their way into what's going to be a monster day of racing. No question with the Pro Tour teams. You know, the dynamic, very interesting. You have Radio Shack, you have Garmin here, you have Ted King of the Cervelo team, which is actually Pro Continental, but really, oh, wow. As we talk about Ted King, it looks like we're already seeing the first group hitting out here as four riders right now coming together. So. It didn't take long. The early move was anticipated by everyone at sign-in. 
as Greenville Hospital Systems, who do a great job of supporting this race. And of course, Duke Energy. Well, there is some serious wattage being applied at the front. The group coming through, kind of a steady tempo right now being set by BMC. That is the team of George Hincapie. As we said, our defending professional champion, Hincapie, a resident here in Greenville, along with Greg Lewis and Chris Butler, who's a BMC teammate of George Hincapie. So three Greenville-based riders in the field. It looks like we are down very quickly, however, to three riders up in the move. Is that in the red and white? That's Daniel Holloway. This is his M.O. Holloway, a rider out of Morgan Hill, California, on the Bissell team. He's up out of the saddle right now. In the back of that group is our reigning national criterium champion. He received a call up a few minutes ago at the start. So he attacked uh, at the Philadelphia International and was a solo rider out in the wind for almost five hours that day. Today he's got some company and there's some real horsepower with him. Young Ben King, 21 years old for the Trek Live Strong team. We talked about Taylor Finney yesterday, winner of our time trial. And today it is Trek Live Strong's Ben King out of Virginia there with the other rider who's probably the most notable in that small group would be Scott Zwazanski from Mill Valley, California, originally from Pennsylvania in the green and yellow of the Kelly Benefit Strategies team. And that is one of the top American domestic squads, although they have a worldwide reach. Uh, Scott is a winner of the Tour of Uruguay, the Tour de Beauce, and Beauce is uh, effectively the Tour of Canada right now. There he is right now. Scott does sitting on the wheel of Ben King. Ben from just outside Charlottesville, Virginia. As the Trek Livestrong rider has already made a huge mark in 2010 on the other coast, really almost on the exact other side of the country in Bend, Oregon. He was our U23. They have a special category for even professional riders like Ben included in this age graded 23 and under category and he is the national road race what we're doing here as well as our national criterium champion. So he already wears the Stars and Stripes jersey oddly enough in this discipline from a race just earlier this summer. Ben was a fantastic host for USA Cycling in their elite U23 and junior nationals. So. Ben really not a, a junior just a couple of years ago. He's only 21 years old, one of the youngest riders in the race. And if, or if he were to win today out of this breakaway, he would be the youngest ever winner here, younger than Lance Armstrong when he did it back in the early 90s. Lance went on to become world champion that same year in Norway. Well, uh, that was Oslo, Norway, certainly a long, long way from Greenville, South Carolina. We're watching the riders right now dropping down off Paris Mountain as Paris Mountain is the huge challenge that they face four times. We saw them on the start loops. Those loops were small. They head out on the big loops. These loops are massive, 22.5 miles for each circuit that will be contested four times. And uh, we get a good look now at our volunteers manning every corner. You can see in the yellow shirts, Greenville Hospital Systems, Duke Energy. When you go to powerhouses like that, they, they always seem to supply amazing, amazing volunteers and enthusiasm as we see some more cowbells ringing here down in the finish area. Downtown Greenville has always been a fantastic venue as our breakaway receives encouragement here of all sorts as they have opened up an advantage that has gone over five minutes at this point. Uh, a lot of uh, people anticipated five minutes maybe being about as much leash as the Pro Tour teams like Radio Shack were going to give, but then we learned that uh, Radio Shack is going to be the team that Ben is going to be riding for next year. Maybe they've got a little something up their sleeve because right now it turns into a Mexican standoff. Nobody wants to chase this back. The group continues to work well together. Holloway's been pitching in. He's right now with the fully unzipped jersey. It's a warm afternoon right now. Temperatures approaching 90 degrees. Daniel, very savvy, dumping the bottle on his head. Scott Zwazanski, who's a, a well-known talent. He also is changing teams for next year. He'll be heading over to United Healthcare. Look at Holloway urging the crowd on, and they they didn't even need it. But Daniel has always been one of these young riders that gets it, a real showman. We talked about USA Cycling and their development program. That's the USA CDF. And they brought on some amazing riders. Ben King is in this next wave right now. 
Ben King uh, has been turning on the afterburners here. Holloway is more of a sprinter. He's a short horse, fast man. Holloway uh, is holding on very well today, however, as we get another look at Daniel just urging this crowd on downtown. The big screen TVs gave everyone uh, right now a very good look at the riders as they approach and as they head back out to tackle Paris Mountain another time here. And boy, we almost started using a sundial now because uh, the time gap is approaching eight minutes, uh, even nine minutes coming over the race radio here. Some riders are going to be attempting to bridge up. We did have a couple riders who went with that early move, and we are hearing now uh, the Mountain Khakis rider involved in a crash coming out of that group. And then yesterday, it was Bernard Van Alden who was phenomenal getting on the time trial. Well, he paid a price today. His legs just locking up. As uh, we are now looking at an attack out of that two, three rider group, Ben King is solo. We are picking up the action now with Ben King, the 21 year old rider out of Charlottesville, Virginia, with his sister Hannah waiting at the finish line for him. Now, we've been very, very excited. Ben King is known as a long range specialist. He attacked uh, in Bend from 40K out and held on as a solo winner, and he did it quite handily. The chase back did not nail him uh, back closer to than one minute there. So Ben King coming through some areas of support here. Uh, ben King's obviously having problems with cramping. At this point in the race, he's inside 30 miles to go. The advantage that he's got on the two riders is blown up. As a matter of fact, we understand is Timmy Duggan, another rider from Colorado, leading the chase now for the Garmin Transitions team. But as Duggan is leading the chase, the riders who were with Ben King have blown to bits. Swazanski and Holloway have gone back to the big group. Painting the picture for you now, that is... Jose Azvedo, the Portuguese superstar of Radio Shack, moving on as a director. He'll be right now working with Ben King. Ben King does not have a radio in his ear. You remember in years past, communication with radio is very common. It's not happening here. So Azvedo's role is going to be to shepherd Ben King to the finish line. Almost no one is anticipating that he'll be able to make it as Ben King, however, is looking to prove them wrong. And Ben King once again hits out. This man is flogging himself like a rented mule that's due back at 5 o'clock this afternoon. As Ben King right now has absolutely figured this out. He almost cramped a couple times. He's backed off just a little bit. He's found his rhythm. Now Hintcap, he's taking a small group. This is an attack out of the chase. Hintcap, it brings Leipheimer with him, but Leipheimer doesn't want to work. Radio Shack will not chase down that man. That might have been the difference, but it came down to heart as Ben King is going to be our champion today. And this is unbelievable. The youngest ever U.S. professional champion at 20 one years old going back to back as the U23 champion. He is now going to win in front of his father, Mark, waiting at the finish line. It does not get better than this in sport. This is why we do this. USA Cycling's professional champion is Trek Livestrong's Ben King. A dream comes true. This time, it's red, white, and blue. Stars and stripes for Ben King. Congratulations in an order from every man who took the start today. As Ben King uh, receiving interviews now, this is the day that you live for. Ben King is your American champion. Alex Candelario coming across the line, taking the field sprint out of that small selection for second with Keel Reinen of Jelly Belly in third. As Steve Johnson, the CEO of USA Cycling, presents our national champion. Coming into the final final laps, I was just suffering so badly. Just, you know, I just wanted to get off my bike every every second, just every muscle cramping, my hand, my neck are cramping. We've been a threat all year, and, uh, you know, I think, I don't think anyone expected it to happen this way, but, I mean, it, it really says a lot about the, the opportunities that we've been given through the team and the support that we have through that team. Jose and, and Alan Lim came up while I was riding in the, in the final circuits and they're just, you know, telling me, you're making history, you're making history. And so I think, I think that's what it means, you know. Stay with us as Greenville celebrates the benefits brought to us by these athletes and find out what brings this community together year after year to overcome life's challenges.